have the bread, I have coffee, I have orange juice, real orange juice. So <laughs> <laughs> the orange, not um, the can or the So until you drink something. Oops, lo siento. Yeah, for a long time. Uh, it's been, sister founded it 40 years ago, more than 40 years ago. 42 years ago. <laughs> has raised more than 40,000 children in, uh, in Honduras and is, you know, the, one of the biggest supporters of brigades and uh, why we're able to do the programming that we do. So, Kike, you want to say a little bit more? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Kike. Uh, Oh, have you not met the NYU? No, no. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is we've the heard. of our Central American operation. So Kike and I, like we, it's like we work together like, hand in hand every day, and with sister and uh, yeah, this is this is the man. This is the man of Central America. <laughs> yeah, but I sorry I didn't get the chance to share with you during this week. Um, we just bought a couple of vehicles and. Uh, I went to Miami to put it in a boat and ship into Honduras, so I'm sorry I couldn't spend any time with you. But I wanted to be here just to, you know, to be a witness to how you can enjoy sister's uh, testimony. Uh, she's been a great person. Uh, she's my mom. I grew up in an orphanage, just like the other 40,000 kids. And now um, that's part of why we do this, is because we want to give back. And um, uh, I want. I really want sister to talk to the group, so you can um, you can see where we're coming from, and you can see why we do this, and you can see the other view of the, what the wonderful job that you did this week. So anyway, um, sister Maria Rosa. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi. <laughs> oh, she actually has a picture of me. <laughs> This is me when I was like one year old. <laughs> I'm the yeah, you can pass it. <laughs> you guys now. <laughs> so all the the brigades. For the great? Yeah. 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 See a lot of people? Yeah. Yeah, yeah in the rain? No. Did you cross any the rivers? Yeah. 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 Do you go up in the mountains? Yeah. Yes. All right. That's the real life. When I was, until I was 14, I believe I came on a ship. I knew the name of the ship. Oh, I came with that word, between the babies. <laughs> I was four. I was in the hospital and I had seen a baby coming out and I almost died, but I didn't know what was going on. So, when I was six years old, my birthday that day, a ship came to my hometown, I'm from Puerto Cortez, it's a port. And six sisters were there coming from Germany. And I saw them. I couldn't understand what I was seeing because they were all covered up through here, long dresses, the way that the sisters used to dress before, many, many years ago. So I start questioning who are they, why they dress that way? So the priest in my hometown said, oh, those are girls that they want to devote themselves for the poor, for the sick, for the orphans, and so on. I was an orphan, so I said, hmm. And I was, I was thinking, even when I was six, I'm going to make homes for the orphans. So when I have seen those sisters, my vocation just got in like a flashlight. Never change again. When I was nine years old, I came to church and started questioning the Blessed Mother. I said, Blessed Mother, where two sisters went? How can I become one of them and I don't know where they are? If you don't help me to find them, how can I? Then I left the church, went out, and there was a train going. That was the only way we could move, by train. No buses, no cars, nothing. 
and two sisters were in that train. Oh, the blessed mother, she answered right away, very special delivery. I just asked, where are those sisters? And they, yeah, they came in the train. And then I really got in my mind, if the Blessed Mother answers so quickly and those sisters are in that train, I have to go with them. That means God wants me to be a religious and devote myself to children. And I still believe that. Because why they came from, from Germany and Lenin, my hometown? Why those other two came in and the train that I have seen them? So I still believe even the sisters who came from Germany came all the way to find me or I find them or whatever. But that was in the way, in, the, in God's plan. Nothing is just happened. But I learned at that time, if you are decided, if you make your own decision, that is what God wants you to do, keep going. And I went through whatever happened. It was not easy, but I was decided, I, I was very sure that I was born to do this and God wants me to do. Why I didn't have parents? Why I was an orphan? Why everything else? So that means the Lord led me all free and nobody can stop me from being a religious and do my work. So when I was nine and I found the sisters, I went, I looked. I went behind them and I asked them if I can come with them. And there were two of the same six that I have seen come in when I was six. And I was already nine. They were in my hometown begging for help in order to make that orphanage. So they took me along but not question anything. They never asked me who I was, where are my parents, if I, am I allowed to go or not, nobody said anything. I was very happy because I didn't have a house for my body. I just ran away when I was nine and I went with those sisters to the orphanage. And Komayawa is like an hour and a half, or an hour and a half from here going north is Komayawa. I lived there until I was 14. Then I make a decision, I know what to do with the orphans, I know what to do with children. Now I want to know what to do with the sick people. So the other four sisters were here in the hospital. They were nurses. So I bothered those two nuns until they sent me to Teguz. I think I was there. Rascal. So <laughs> I came to Teguz to the hospital when I was 14. That's where I find out that you don't come in a box. <laughs> I even knew the name of the ship that I came in. But anyway, these are all stories. <laughs> And, and then I work in there. I was too young, according to the German nurse, you know, to go into the hospital. So they sent me to the X-ray to learn how to develop plates. And ah, I learned how to do that. I could take easy X-rays. I didn't know how to read them. What I know is a broken bone. You can see it, no problem. But I didn't like it too much. I like to move active. And then I was just there in the dark thing. So they sent me to the, to the lab to learn how to make tests. I learned that very quickly. Blood cells and red cells. But you know, all day, seeing bugs. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't like it. I said to the sister, <coughs> Send me to go wherever I can walk up and down and do something else that sitting all day long in there. And then I, I make a decision to ask to work nights with the sisters because they were a hospital of four floors, no elevators. But those poor nuns had to go up and down all the time. I said, I will do the up and down for them. I will take whatever they need and bring whatever they don't. Yeah, sounds good. This. No, nobody ever thought of helping that way to the poor nuns. Anyway, I was night and I learned a lot of things going with them. I learned many, many things that I could sometimes take care of patients, like giving a bath, pulling the, the sheet, 
that they don't get wrinkles, making the pillow a little cool, giving a little rub in the back. <laughs> and if somebody was too sad that I thought, oh, poor person, I start singing for her. I make jokes that they could. So in the end, they were saying, what is that little girl that I was come here to bother us anyway, but they were happy. <laughs> So I learned all that. My point was to do something for people, even to make them happy if I could not do anything. Like I said to you people, you know, just give a smile to people. You'll be surprised how that counts up there. It's well paid like that. So anyway, when I was 22, I asked the sisters, where well, I'm going to Milwaukee to become a sister because I'm getting old. And I want to be a sister when I'm young enough to work. Then I start loving the sick, but never lose my, I want to work for the orphans. I went to Milwaukee. After one day I said, well, if you don't send me, I'm going to San Salvador or any place where they can take me. So in 15 days.